We're ready to rock? You scooted. <laughs> I moved you on purpose. Okay, am I good? Yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. We are good. <laughs> You're just like happy you guys are chopped off um, on this one. Mute my phone. Just get Hi. Hi, Heather, and Sherry's on here, and Shauna. Hi, hi. hi. Pleased to see you. Uh, I'm Scott. Uh, we have people every week that hop on that are new. Um, this is my colleague and mostly dominant person, Darcy. <laughs> Hi, and uh, Heather, we're here with our live uh, Hi, Hi, Pleased to see you. Uh, I'm Scott. Uh, we have people every week that hop on that are new. Uh, this is my colleague and mostly dominant person, Darcy. And we're here with our live uh, Oh, there we go. All right. Um, <laughs> That's why we're all here. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, uh, here at Dog to Dog, uh, we've started doing a. Uh, uh, live question and answer. Um, uh, period. Uh, that we, we've, we've addressed several different things. We try and kind of group it together. Uh, and to th this week, we're going to talk about this whole dominance thing. Okay. Uh, Heidi was one. Um, Kristen was another. People that asked me about what does it mean to be the pack leader? What What is that? You know, what... What, what, you know, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean to my dog. You know what? Okay. So we thought we would address that whole dominance thing because as humans, we we talk about dominance, right? And we it's usually a negative connotation, uh, really, unless you're you're uh, uh, going to management training or whatever. They'll talk to you about dominance. You know, verbal judo. You know, things, how do you, you maintain order? Well, the very concept of order generally means a stratification of a group of individuals. Now, unlike us, dogs are genetically predisposed to look for order. They're actually looking for it. And if they don't sense it, they can't see it they themselves will become uh, dominant. They're very good trainers. Dogs are excellent trainers that they learn, push the button, you know. If I lick mom a hand, what happens? Good or bad? Good or bad? You know, oh, that's a good, oh, I like that one. And that's how dogs uh, do. What are we looking at? Uh, so people who are watching, um, just make sure that you're muted. Yeah. Oh. So so we don't hear what's going on at, at your house. Who's going to do it so they can't unmute? There we go. Okay, sweet. See, is, is that awesome? Dog trainer. Dog trainer. Yeah. Computer, not so much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, dominance. Um, is a process by which the dog is uh, led to understand. It's important to understand that. Um, the term force is something that a lot of people struggle with. Um, we don't like to be forced. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't like to be told. You know, that's, uh, it's, it's kind really of a thing. Make you know, except for by the dominant uh, pack leader lady here. So <laughs> that's one of those things that you lead the dog to understand something that they are genetically able to comprehend. They don't have an issue with being stratified because dogs uh, can't be equal. 
That's if you've ever seen, you're always going to have a little bit of something. One or the other is going to consider itself dominant. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to run all the time. When we talk about a drive running, that, that it's in the dog, it's manifest. There may only be certain times when a dog says, okay, that's enough. That's enough of that. And many of you will see that with your dogs. Say, yeah, that old dog over there, I mean, really, it doesn't care unless food, people, toys, something happens, right? You know, that's enough of that. And the young dog, whoa, okay, wow. That's, and you see your pack structure, you know? So, um, when we, we're going to have a little demo too. We thought we'd start throwing some demonstration in here uh, a little bit about this is now I've had people ask. We've had several bunches of questions come in that are directly related to obedience training. Um, that's, this is, that's not our platform for this. Um, we have our group obedience, uh, which has come out and it's online as well, where we actually talk you know, behavior modification, but we'll talk a little bit about dog handling, you know, how do you do certain things? Um, we'll throw some of that in here, here, here in a minute. Um, one of the things that's like when you're living in a household full of uh, multiple dogs. So um, Gypsy is female. She's an Airedale. She's going to be two. I have a Staffordshire Terrier who is 11, male, um, and it's interesting. They have a very, uh, you know, <laughs> complicated. <laughs> complicated relationship. No, um, but they're very packy. They really like each other, but it's always fascinating for me to see Gypsy because it's a matriarchal society, how she, uh, reminds Joe often that she is the boss of him. <laughs> You know, I'm the boss of everybody, but, you know, we don't get uh, involved in pack, um, you know, politics that much, um, unless, you know, you're talking about fighting on turf and things like that. Uh, we can't have that. But just the way she body postures with him, uh, the way she'll, um, you know, he'll, he'll be getting off the couch and then he's going to go into his crate. Well, she decides, no, that is my crate. And she cuts him off and goes in. So it's kind of fascinating. If you start to watch um, your dogs, if you have multiple dogs, you can kind of start to see how they um, are that way with each other. Uh, so when I was in Costa Rica, I went to a dog rescue and see, it's just a big, huge fenced off area. And you could see the dogs some of them were higher, but, and some of them were like down on the ground, you, you know, some dogs were playing, but the minute they opened these big gates and there were probably eh, two or 300 dogs. I mean, there were a lot of dogs and they're all shooting out this gate. You could see who dog number one was down to the very end. And there was a dog that was squirting in front of another dog uh, they had a discussion and one was bleeding. So it's, it's, it's fascinating if you get a chance to actually see dogs do this kind of thing. Let's explain that. Okay. Why is dominance or, or being in a position as a, a dominant individual in a pack or what the dog perceives as the pack, regardless of what we call it, so important. Let's take that very example. Uh, a door, a portal. Okay, that we don't think about it too much. But how many of you, you know, say, yeah, I try and go out the door, my dog crashes past me or drags me out, or I have to drag them out or whatever. Now, let's before we do human dog, let's do dog, dog, dog to dog. <laughs> okay, so we have the door. And you generally speaking, are going to be able to tell what your pack order is. Now, Dars has mentioned with dogs, right? This will be cross species. 
Dogs will act this way with little children, with adults, with, I mean, whatever. That's if there are not, if it's not multiple dogs, you're going to see pack behavior with living creatures there, cats, whatever, whatever, you know, where the dog says, no, you're not going to go into my space before I do, because that is my sign that, you know, I, I am in charge of that. I rank above you. So I've seen some really gruesome uh, fighting. Uh, people say, I don't understand, Scott. I, I, I don't understand how that happened. They get along so well together. Well, until you change environment, venue. And in that little space, which is a door, every living thing has to go in and out of that space. Dogs don't do doors. That, that's, not, that's a human thing. So you create an artificial field, if you will, to where the dog has a, a purpose to say, I go for, through first. Just like you see a pack of wolves, there's stuff on Facebook, you see, you know, how the wolves are, are stratified according to who's first, what, there's a reason for all of it. Does it mean that the pack leader administrator is always at the front? Not necessarily. It's just law depending on what's safest. Now, the word pack leader, for so many, especially him, figured that's the toughest dog. Data has shown, and I've observed, Darcy observed, that's not always the case. Um, your, your leaders are often the best administrators. They're the best providers. They're the best mothers and fathers. And they'll have a series of animals underneath them that are ranked that you could call uh, should we call them royalty? That's, I mean, I don't know another word, right? They're assistants. And they often will be involved in making sure that the pack structure stays the way it is. Because pack mama, pack dad have to be, that's, they are the providers. That they're, that's, they genetically, puppies are produced. That's the whole deal. So for a dog, it's very much a biological need. That's, that, that is something that they look for. They don't understand, okay? I've got three dogs. We have Fluffy, Fifi, and Fufu, right? <laughs> okay, and we say, all right, we're going to give Fluffy a treat, or we're going to give Fifi a treat, or we're going to give Fufu a treat. Well, Fluffy doesn't like Fufu. Okay, she, she's Omega. She's at the bottom. And you'll see this, you know, Fluffy starts to get a little weird you know, about you saying, no, we're all friends together, right? Well, sooner or later, shortly thereafter, Fluffy has words with Fufu, okay? Whether there's Fang or whatever, but the dogs will make sure, yeah, the human's pretty well, you know, that's fine, but I'm the boss, so, you don't sit next to mom in the chair when I want to sit next to mom. Now, being ultimate pack leaders, that's what you are as humans or should be. You can control who does what. That, that, that's your kings and queens. That, that's your deal. Just understand that to the dog, that doesn't make sense. And you can get spat. They can become scrappy, right? Um, and depending on your dog, all dogs are different. And all humans are different. All homes are different. So you're, you're going to have varying ways that that happens. Well, so often how we are with our dogs is not the behavior of an administrator. Uh, you're kindly, wonderful people. You love your dogs. And we can let that feeling, I don't, I don't want my dog to dislike me. That's not going to happen. The dog, dogs will go back to a foot that kicks it. Pack is iron, stainless steel. It must be maintained. So I will tolerate unbelievable behavior if necessary, if, that's, if that keeps the pack together, which allows for uh, abusive stuff at times, whatever you say, you know, I mean, you do that with another animal, a cat or something, you go to the hospital or, you know, whatever. And, but dogs, they're looking for that order if you provide it, it can be a truly remarkable thing. But how you move with a dog, how you keep the dog around you, your, your physical, you should be 
the sun coming up because that's what the dog considers you to be. Sun coming up in the morning. I just want to be with you. But your behavior can be really, really uh, confusing. You know, um, what about that treat thing? I really like those, mom. Those treat things are. Well, and sometimes a bed can be a major problem. Uh, um, couch watching a movie. Yeah. You know, um, that kind of thing. And we, we, we come into homes all the time. That's Fluffy's chair. That the uh, Fifi and Fufu, that they cannot get on Fluffy's chair. That's the chair. Do you do you get on the chair? Oh no 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 no. Uh, Fl Fluffy doesn't care for that at all. So we go. <laughs> That's so funny. You know whatever. What's happened is you start to see what your pack structure is. So when Fluffy does something uh, outrageous, okay, pees on your bed, right? Poops in a slipper. Um, eat your flip-flop, whatever, you know, and you act, right? Ah, what are you doing? And whatever, and Fluffy whips around, excuse me, back off, you know? Well, we're mad, so we, we're ignoring, you know, don't you, whatever, and sometimes uh, we can have some unfortunate behaviors that then everybody's freaking out and saying the dog is aggressive or, you know, whatever. And the, as you, we swing, you know, the pendulum, my favorite fluffy is now evil fluffy, you know, <laughs> and that you're guys, no, it's not. You, you just have to reorganize um, the pack. Now, what in our training, what we, we talk about, we have two in, in, in all of our training, you have two things always. You have behavior modification, which is rearranging the pieces on the chessboard, so to speak, so that you can see, you know, the dog can start to, oh, <laughs> you, oh, yeah, you're kind of the boss person. Yes. Life giver right here. We, we, we are life givers. And, you know, and so like with the feeding ritual, see, when Gypsy was six weeks old, I brought her home. And in about eight weeks, I started a feeding ritual. Go ahead and explain that. Go yes. ahead and take them through the feeding ritual. Yeah, so a feeding ritual is, uh, I, I do this for the life of the dog because I am setting up, I feed twice a day. Some people feed once a day. It doesn't really matter. But twice a day, I do a feeding rit ritual with my dogs where um, I have them always at least sitting. And then I put their food outside of their reach and I count to 30 seconds. Um, and so there's ways that we teach you how to control all that, but because I've been doing it so long with them, see, they just know the drill. So they come off the food and they're looking at me. Um, I have a release word. I use the word. Okay. I don't care what word you would use, but in that moment, twice a day, I remind my dogs that I am the one who administers the food. I'm the life giver. Um, and so it, I mean, it, it does a multitude of things, tells me about the health of the dog. If dogs come off food for a certain amount of time, that gives me a clue. So there's other reasons I do it, but my main one is to, uh, just remind and establish every time I feed that I am the queen and I am the one who administers the food. Uh, dogs don't give each other food. Um, even in a teeny little uh, tank, um, it was at a pet store um, in Kentucky or something like that I was at, and there were uh, nine week old puppies in this tank, and it was feeding time. Um, I have an issue with that for other reasons, but it was fascinating on a behavioral standpoint, because they put the food in, and I could see dog number one, these are little puppies going in and eating. To the very last one, there were six of them. Um, and I could see how they ranked by how they approached the food and they were mannerly and weighted. So even dogs do that. Yes. And uh, the object is to communicate with your dog. 
in a manner that they understand. And in the feeding ritual, one of the, the more interesting challenges as a dog trainer, you know, getting, you know, I want my dog to find bombs or, or, or narcotics or, you know, lost people or, or I want my dog to lead me around because I'm sight impaired, you know, or I'm in a wheelchair, whatever. Every single thing is founded on the dog's behavior and the, how the dog sees you. Um, now, are, are, is there only one way to train? Of course not. That is, people are all thinking, trying, you know, how can I get this behavior modified? How can I manage certain behaviors? But if the dog doesn't see you as someone to be listened to, you're going to start off, you're going to have trouble right off the bat. That, that, I mean, you're just going to have trouble. And in the feeding ritual, you come really, really close to virtually perfect communication because the dog knows what you're doing. Biologically, they know what you're doing. Oh, so you control nutrition. Yes, I control everything. Actually, I control your toys and your bedding space and everything else. Because the minute a dog thinks that you have seeded any of that to them. And we have, as an example, a child. We go over and Fluffy, we're back to Fluffy, evil Fluffy now. Fluffy is eating and the child tries to go in, rah, 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 you know, whatever. Ah, Fluffy is aggressive. Oh my gosh, she hates children, whatever. No, that's not the case. Fluffy is acting in a way that she believes. I'm assuming Fluffy is female. Not necessarily, right? Okay. So um, say that little human who is not ranked above me is trying to take my food. So I disciplined it. Why is everyone screaming? You know, what's the big deal? Guys, the, the do dogs, that's how dogs are with each other. There, there is, and if you change venue, I worked at a kennel for a while, you know, for, for a very good friend of mine. And uh, I did it kind of as a favor. It, it was fun. You know, I was, I was a professional at the time, but she needs some help. I was amazed. Lady comes in with five, count them, five poodles, standard poodles, oh. right? <laughs> okay. They're, they're beautiful animals, beautiful animals. And I was really interested. They come in, they're like sheep around her. You know, they really wouldn't get more than four or five feet. And I'm thinking, okay, I wonder what they're going to be like when she leaves. She says, oh, don't worry. You know, we kennel them and stuff. No problem. Sure enough. I take them back in the kennel. La, 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 la. You know, they all go back and they're just, they were the sweetest dogs. And she said, you could, don't worry about feeding them, you know, separate and stuff. You know, but they've all, they all eat together. There's no problem. And I thought, mm -hmm. Hmm. That this should be interesting because we're not home now. New turf. We're on new turf, right? Oh my goodness. It took them two days to figure out. And yes, I did have to feed them separately. They, they, would, they would not tolerate that. Now, isn't that interesting? And that's where we see a biological response. That is not, it has nothing to do with being obnoxious or whatever. It is the dog establishing rank again because we're on new turf. You'll see this at dog parks. You'll see it camping, whatever. So I don't know what happened to my dog. You introduced it to someplace different. The dog doesn't know what the pack is here or what the structure is. And depending on your dog, whether they're dominant or subordinate or whatever, will depend on what the behavior is. We see it every time we do a group lesson and on our Saturday confidence and emergence. Yeah, you'll see dogs coming in. Um, you know, we always have them leashed because we have a very controlled environment. But you know, I mean, eye contact, body posture. Uh, there are dogs that do not like each other and so, uh, you know, if uh, you, yeah, I they're mean, bigots, man. It's it's really disturbing. <laughs> but you're, hey, look, we have people ask us all the time. I have professionals. I've I've been in this forever, you know, thirty six years, and I have people come and say, Scott, I don't know, I don't know how you guys are doing that. 
you know, that you bring all these people and we've got new ones coming in and we've got people who've been coming for years and stuff. We have dogs that we know are snarky about other dogs, whatever. How are you doing that? This is how we are teaching the humans how to be administrators, how to be dominant. So that when the dog receives stimulus, this guys, if you don't take anything else away, if you establish correct pack paradigm, where you are a dominant figure and the dog respects you, trusts you, then stimulus comes into the dog and what does the dog do? Looks at you, see? So here's Fluffy again, right? But not evil Fluffy. This Fluffy has had dog to dog training. <laughs> okay, so eat, 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 right? Here comes the, the child la, 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 and we get in the food. There is no reaction to the child. The dog backs away from the food and looks up at the handler, at the owner. Um, yeah, that's, that's a puppy of mine. And they pretty much can do what they want. Now, your, we don't get involved. Usually we try not to get involved. Between parents and children and how you raise your children and stuff, you would, wouldn't believe what they ask dog trainers to do. Um, you cannot afford us to train your children, you know, so, so please don't ask, but it's people do, you know, how do I, it's your family, your, so the child is complex, even a two-year-old whose behavior seems very canine at times is infinitely more complex than a dog. So you, you need to teach them what the rules, whether we don't approach the dogs, that's up to you, but don't do it right here at the dog. Okay. Don't discipline the child off. Don't touch that. That's a dog's food. What are you doing? Stop doing that. That's their toy. What's going to happen, guys? Think about it. You're setting you, yourself up. Setting for... yourself up for, for a clip on that kid because the child doesn't know. They go in, you know, food, toy, whatever, and the dog says, well, the pack leader said, this is mine, so back off. The child has no idea. They don't know. You know, they don't know the flags. Dogs don't lie. You know, ears, tail, get, er, stop doing that, and boom, we've got a problem. Oh, that fluffy is evil, fluffy again, you know, whatever. Okay, so that's, that's why dominance uh, an appropriate stance with your dog is so important because truly the dog is genetically predisposed to be mannerly. That they with within a pack structure, dog dogs will fit like I've said, you know, puzzle piece. Uh, where do I belong? I just love you. You know, I just love the sun coming up in the morning. I just love you. So now we had, uh, I have a question that just came up uh, just in the last little bit. What do I do with a dog fight? Okay, that's let, let's say that it just has gone south. What do I do? Number one, do not try and put yourself between the fighting dogs. Okay, I've seen a lot of people, I mean, I've, you know, I've been involved in combat dogs, patrol dogs, you know, you don't, don't go in there. That's not, they are in the midst and you're going to get clipped. You're going to get bit. And some of those could be crappy. You know, that's, I mean, and you I mean, guys, dog bites are way worse. It's not just a hole in you. It's compression or whatever. So um, if I've seen people grab a tail, um, tails are, are, I mean, I've seen people, you know, try and grab the dog. That is the proper principle. But the problem with grabbing a tail, number one, the dog may not have one. Number two, it's a little far back on the dog's body and the dog can turn the length of its body. So they're still in fight mode. Something grabs them by the tail. You might have the dog come back along its body and it's most displeased about what's going on. Okay. So generally speaking, don't, number one, don't, don't go in. You know, that's easy to say, right? But you're, you know, you're, you could really get hurt trying to separate dogs if you don't know what you're doing. Number two, okay, let's say you're going to give it a shot. 
you grab the dogs from the back, just in front of the hind legs and pull and lift. It's called the wheelbarrow. Does that make sense? Wheelbarrow the dog. Lift those hind legs off the ground and step two steps back. The dog will be virtually helpless. You're far enough up into the dog's body, we call it. They really can't get at you. And if they try, you just lift and the head stays. They're only sharp on one end. I will tell you that I've had that happen with a Malinois <laughs> and no one was there to help me. So I was, hello, standing there holding this dog by its butt. Will someone please come and help me? You know, please, someone come and help me. And he's, oh my goodness, it's like a tiger by the tail type thing, right? But separating them off and you often can swing them away so you, you get contact, uh, uh, you stop the actual contact between the two dogs because then you're standing, you have the other dog by the, the hind and you can turn side, the other dog may or may, you know, come off because now a human's involved. Um, if it's more serious than that, that you're gonna need some help. You know, I mean, it's, that's generally the case. A uh, big stick, you know, people say, you know, pick up as a tr try and keep multiple dogs from coming in, but it, it's, it's best. Okay, having said all that, it's best to prevent that incident. And, and we talk all the time about you're going to either uh, be proactive, you're gonna like uh, look around, you're gonna make choices to keep yourself out of a bad spot instead of just having to uh, make decisions on the fly and you're in a bad place. See, um, it, it, it's crappy when you do that. Go. Yeah, we talk about going in where angels fear to tread. Yeah. I mean, not only being surprised because your recon uh, or your, your observation hasn't been appropriate, been but doing it on purpose. Uh, now, this, this is not, look, we just love you guys. You know, we think you're great, but we know that humans sometimes you're kind of stubborn. Right. So we may be that dog's not the boss of me. I'm going to take that dog past that fence where those dogs are, blah, 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 you know, on the fence. No. Uh, why? What what do you have to what, well, I'm proving that you're, you are not. You're walking into stimulus that overcomes your ability. And. We just had really good people, you know, I got bit like two or three times and we couldn't, we didn't know what to do exactly. That's exactly right. Um, so always, always know where you're going, avoid those places where something like that could happen. We're not telling you, we don't want it to come to you. It could. Uh, well, I'm out walking and I have my dog on a leash. I'm being lawful or whatever. And somebody lets a dog out and it's not on a leash. And folks, it's going to happen. So if it's a little dog, pick it up. Okay. Don't cross your fingers and hope to die and say, oh, I hope they get along. Dogs all get along, right? I Man, if I had a dollar for every time somebody saw, I, I, I thought dogs all got along. They do not. They do not. They don't. And depending on the dog's drive structure, genetics is, is going to depend on how they, they are with other dogs. If you have two, they're like this, well, things could go south. If you have one dog that's more subordinate and knows how to act in a way where your dominant dog rushes up and the dog lays down and just goes still and the dog stands over him, I am the boss of you. This is fluffy and beefy, right? Okay. Okay. Did you hear me? I said I was the boss of you. Okay. Fine. And they go. And then sometimes uh, if, if you're talking about dog parks and you're looking for the whole thing um, when it comes to dominance, uh, be aware 
because I've been in a dog park um, there with a client and two dogs came in um, and the whole energy of the park changed and all the humans are clumped together. Nobody's paying attention to the dogs. Um, I had my Staffordshire Terrier there, a born gladiator. Um, he's sweet as the day is long, but he did not like the way these dogs were being. And I didn't like, I didn't want to open the door in his head. Like these dogs are poking all the dogs trying to start something. Um, and so then I call him over and clip him up. And then the people in the park are like saying, Hey, let your dog play. See, that's when you have to feel and know what to do. Yeah, it's not play. It's not play. And it wasn't fun. And I didn't like what I was seeing. And so I just clipped up my dog and we left. But you have to be aware. Uh, yeah. so play is pretty obvious, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, Darcy's a professional. So you're, you're not saying, oh, maybe I'm mistaken, you know, whatever. There's play, levels of play, progressively rougher. The fine line. Play has purpose. Play is non-combat dominant discretion. Okay, so dogs figure out where they are without fighting. Duh, you know, dogs don't have to fight to do, to do dominance. How they, and you'll see older dogs and stuff, the play will get a little bit rougher and all of a sudden they'll go dominant. Ah, hey, oh, right, sorry, whatever. And they go, go off and play some more. But there's a fine line at the top between play and combat, you know, where neither dog is going to back off. The play goes stiff, we call it. You've seen it, tail up, stop wagging, uh, you know, and now, guys. That's one of those places, you, you know, you, you can't. And this is where we see a good handler. You know, you, you should be able to say, hey, leave it, you know, come here. And the dog will come right out of that. Why? Because you are the king. That's, you do not question what kings or queens say. That is a done through training. That, that, that's what training is all about. Okay. Now, movement wise, we're going to show you uh, a little bit of movement. I'll have uh, Darce move the, the computer around for a minute. And will how you are with your dog, okay, can have a huge impact on your life as you take your dog out uh, into the world. All righty? So uh, you go over here. This is not fluffy. This is gypsy. gypsy. Okay. It's not fluffy. Let's see. Give me a second, just to okay. Just... All right. So now, Gypsy has had a lot of training. All right. So uh, I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit um, how we stand. Now, uh, we do not care which side you move your dog on. Okay, we're talking about whether you're healing or, or moving. But I handle the dog the same way all the time. And once you've done this a whole bunch, I keep, uh, unless I have turned my dog loose, by command, I am king. So I will say, you know, you can go play, you know, do whatever, right? Um, but if the dog is with me otherwise, then... I'm gonna have my power hand right here. I'm gonna have my feel for the leash so I know I'm not even looking at the dog. And you can do a couple of things that are so simple you won't believe it, but can change the behavior of many dogs. Now, the tougher the dog, the more you have to work and you may have to change up tools, that kind of thing. But it's called the two-step, okay? So all of your strength, is right here, right across your hips. Okay, so we're not up here. Or I'm not doing the suicide wrap. Ah, look at me now. I know there's you out there. Okay, this can be bad. Okay, Gypsy weighs 65 pounds, and if you put her in a harness and tied her to a car, she'd probably pull it up the street, especially if I had a ball. Okay, so 
we, we don't want to be struggling or fighting static combat with the dog. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Right? Stop that. You know, the dog's hacking and gorking, you know, whatever. Okay, so we keep the dog right here at our hips and we step back and we step forward and we step back and we step forward and we step back and we give her a command, sit, which she knows, okay? That is a subordinate posture, all right? Gypsy knows that little teeny thing, shoulders up, eyes up, never even looked at the dog, you can do now. I call it the two step. <laughs> that's because that's what I call it. Okay. You could do three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Beware of what's behind you when you do something like this. We call this active, passive, weird, right? Two completely separate things. Dominance. Why is it active? Because I'm moving and I'm keeping the dog pinned right here. Okay, I've seen people who say, well, somebody told me to tie the dog to my belt. That's way too much room. Guys, it's too much room. You know, the dog, I want the dog right here. This space is sacred. It is a place where the dog can come to and will come to, to be loved and whatever. So we teach the dog, if you see something that you don't understand, I want you right here. This is the deal, that's part of, of training. So in your own home, you won't believe it. You get in the kitchen or the living room, one, two, three, one, two, three. Don't, don't worry about it being pretty. That's it. Guys, no one's judging you. All you're doing is moving and proving to the dog, see? Now she'll try and pull the collar out. No, I want you closer to me. Always. That's what I want to do with you when I'm, when I'm with you. I'm not going to let you be on one of them stringy leashes and you're at the farmer's market and the dog is 14 feet away across the way interacting with another dog, much to the chagrin of that dog's handler. You know, whatever. Oh, I thought all dogs get along. No. So this is about manners and it's about I move, you move. I stop, you sit. So what we do, sit forward, up, and we go backwards like this, and we come forward like this, sit up on the collar, down on the butt, and pat. And she shakes it off. I'm sorry, I'm cutting my head off. Okay, so how you are with your dog is one of the many variants to establish law. This is just law. Guys, it's law. You know, not, huh, 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 you know, yeah, he wants to go over here. Of course, because you're, you're not the administrator. The dog wants to be elsewhere. Come on, human, stupid, let's go. The whole world smells like ambrosia, <laughs> including pee and poo and dead things and bugs and work, you know, whatever. So they're gonna go from ooh, ah, ooh, ah. No, don't do that. You're with me. I will, when I'm ready, turn you loose to be a dog. And then we will resume our relationship, which is me, you the handler as the dominant administrator, and we have Law brings order, right? Order brings confidence. Confidence brings trust and trust brings joy. Gypsy trusts me. She's, you know, I mean, she's my friend. Now we have a credo uh, that came from the people who taught me many decades ago. It is the first of the training credos in service dog work. The dog is your friend. We will not use compul compulsive measures, a collar or anything else, except to enforce the law. 
We must. The law is as critical to the dog as it is to us. And we will insist, we will enforce law. My second credo, which I live by, if there's no reason to say no, say yes. Think about that, parents. If there's no reason to say no, if you don't have a reason to say no, say yes. You'll be surprised what the world's like with you. I let a dog be a dog. At my home, my dogs are dogs. If I speak, I only do so if I need to. There's a reason for it. You know, get off the couch, stop doing that. You know, my three-legged American bulldog mix, trike. You should like that name. That's better looking, I think. But he nurses on the blanket on the couch. It is something that is common in the Mastiffs, where you can hear it. He's sucking on my blanket. You know, said, stop that. You know, leave it. And he looks at me with those eyes. Oh my gosh. Is it life or death for me? No. He just happened to annoy me enough that I could hear it over the movie I'm trying to watch, right? So I'm not going to be as tough on that as I am on bolting out the front door, which is a safety issue. Jumping up on guests, which can also be a safety issue. It's an annoyance until the first guest goes, oh my gosh, steps backward and it's a step. And they go down the front steps. It's grandma coming up from her apartment downstairs. These are all true stories. And the dog jumps toward grandma, she steps back and she goes down the stairs. Then, generally speaking, after all of the heartache and or injury and or anger or whatever, it's the dog that it's gonna, it's gonna take in the chops. In order to preserve a family, in order to preserve whatever, neighbors, whatever, it's the dog that's gonna pay. That's, that's just the way it is. So it's best to be proactive. Darcy mentioned that, right? Be, be proactive. I won't even quote, because I actually don't know right now the exact percentage, but the percentage of people who seek a professional to help them train properly, gently, passively, but to enforce order is disturbing. It's disturbing. Um, there, there just aren't a whole lot. And the shelters are full because people say, you know what? I don't know what we did. That's crazy. You know, we can't get the dog potty trained. We can't, you know, the dog is eating my furniture. It jumps up on me on my house. I don't know what to do. That's like saying that your toilet's clogged and it's going to be clogged forever because I, I just, I, I'm not, I don't want to call the plumber. You know, most people say, yeah, I've got to have my toilet working. You know, that's kind of one of those things. And so you're going to call someone, well, your dog is anywhere from a 10 to a 16 or 17 year commitment. And I can tell you that living joyfully with a dog, which I've done for decades and decades, they were my partners, um, makes a better person of you. I think most of you agree. Dogs will make a better person of you. But unrestrained, they tend to bring out either profanity or otherwise unacceptable behaviors. Okay, so that's your demo for today. We killed Gypsy apparently. She's not moving now. She's bored. Oh, there she goes. All right. Please send questions here. Okay, uh, dog to dog on our Facebook page. You can send them there as well. Um, we have questions all the time. Uh, we will be doing a uh, something that is along the lines of a kids camp. Um, we, we find children delightful and uh, we will strive to answer their questions which are not the questions adult, adults ask. They are open and pure, and they tend to want to know why a dog pees like they do. Why does a dog lift its leg? You know, why does a dog eat poop? You know, whatever, and they're just open. So 
It's a place where kids and families will be able to learn. Um, that will be launching here in uh, certainly within the next 30 days. Uh, we would invite you to, to uh, spread that out. We want to make that, we just really, really like working with kids and with dogs. So that's one of the things, our group, uh, we invite you to our group obedience. Um, look for our information, you know, uh, come onto our page. And uh, that's all rolling forward. This online stuff has been really, really good for us. Um, it only takes a virus, I guess, to... Uh, get the get the old creative juices rolling. So um, we're we're grateful for you. Uh, we, we we love you. We love your dogs truly. Um, and uh, what do you, what else you got? Anything? Um, I don't think so. Um, I appreciate you guys, and it's like we couldn't do what we do without you. Yeah. Um, and we love you. We love your dogs, and it's really an honor for us to be able to. Uh, have you as part of our dog to dog family so it's not a job it's an adventure it's an avocation for us and we just love it a whole bunch all right we will see you next wednesday 12 30 12 30 for q a please send us any and all questions weird i mean read questions you know mail anything you want send them in and we will address those things for you thank you so much have a good week